Today we are going to show you how to plastic gauge your main caps and your rod bearings for your engine. Uh, as you can see we are going to do a Chevy 350. This happens to be a Vortec 350. Uh, we're doing it out of the vehicle. You could do this in the vehicle. Um, the only thing is, is if you do it in the vehicle you want to make sure that you do not have any anything attached to it as in the front crank pulley and the flex plate or flywheel in the back because if you have it and if you have any of the engine at an angle cranked at an angle with a jack you can get a bad reading. Uh, we're doing this on a stand just makes it a lot easier plus uh, we don't do we, we just rebuild engines we don't do them in the car. Uh, plastic gauge why are you going to plastic gauge your engine? You're going to make sure that you have the right clearances because if you buy a brand new crank and you don't check these clearances and you put it together and it knocks and it ruins your brand new crank manufacturer will not warranty a crank there comes with no warranties in all the years we've been doing this we had one crank that broke in half just a freak of nature that was the only one we got warranty but never for anything else because even though it may be a brand new connecting rod maybe a brand new crank and you may have line honed your engine it's your responsibility to make sure that it is put together correctly and you have the right clearances you can see up here we have all the tools out that we're going to need there's the plastic gauge you can see the uh, long thin green line is the actual plastic gauge itself kind of looks like a piece of spaghetti uh, behind it is the gauge that tells you what the measurement is how many thousands you are uh, next to that we have uh, we've got the bear the rod bearings and the main bearings and just some tools we've also got the connecting rods and we've also got a torque wrench for this you'll need a torque wrench uh, and obviously you'll need some sockets to take to take it apart okay we're gonna start off by doing the main caps uh, first you're gonna take a piece of the plastic gauge Now the main caps, for the people that might not know, are going to be the pieces, you see where the two bolts are coming up? They're that would hold down the crank into the block. We have one removed, all the other ones have been installed and already tightened to their proper torque setting. He's wiping that to make sure it's clean, you want to make sure all your stuff's clean. Just a little bit of dirt can be bad for your engine. The bearings do go in a certain way too, so you want to make sure that you install them the right way. Now he's cut off a little piece. Is there a piece in there? He's going to lay it in there sideways. Hang on, let me see that just a moment. Yep, we're good. Okay. Now this happens to be a four bolt main, meaning there's four bolts holding that main cap down. So he's going to start tightening that down. Not going to tighten it real tight, just just snug. You notice you go from side to side, so you don't so you don't have the bearing bind up in there, and you can crack the cap if you if you don't do that.
Now what he's going to do is he's going to take the torque wrench and he's going to tighten it to the settings. Uh, every engine has different settings, so you really need to check for the engine that you're that you're doing. But uh, he's going to tighten this with his torque wrench. The torque wrench he has makes a buzzing sound. You, you don't have to have a super expensive one. You can get one from Harbor Freight. That does happen to be a snap-on. Okay. And now that engine is tightened down to what that's exactly as if, if you weren't checking the bearing, if you weren't checking for clearance, that basically would be how you tie that, that would be ready to stick into your engine, or into your car, um, as far as the crank goes. Now he's going to take that back off, he's going to loosen that up. When he gets to the part, what we're going to check for is to see if the taper is good. Uh, we're going to check both sides, uh, on, on each side of the bearing. Um, now sometimes this, this uh, plastic gauge will stick to the bearing, sometimes it'll stick to the crank, uh, so it can happen to either way. End up sticking to the bearing. Now, as you can see, it stuck to the bearing, and what it did is it flattened it out. And as you can see, he's got about two thousandths clearance. A little less on the one end, a little more on the other. But still within the tolerance that would be allowed for this particular engine. So, uh... We're good to go. I got a good picture of that. So now what he's going to do is he's going to go ahead and put that back on there. He's going to go ahead and put that back in. And basically, that is how you use the plastic gauge on the mains. As you notice, you always put assembly lube. You always put assembly lube on when you're ever you're. Uh, putting an engine together. You also always put a little oil on the bolts. To uh, These have already been oiled because you tightened them in, but you put a little oil on the bolts that helps to keep them from binding up in there also. Next what we're going to do is we're going to show you, once he gets this tightened up, we're going to show you how to do your rod. Check your rod bearings to make sure that they have the proper clearance. One thing you should always do too is spin, the, spin your crank around when you're done, just to make sure everything spins good. Once he's done torquing it, he will spin it around to make sure there's no problems with it binding up.
Now obviously you would check each one of these that way. We're just showing you one uh, because obviously if you know how to do one you'll know how to do all the other ones. But they're all done the same way. And then when you're done just rotate the crank around make sure that it spins nice and free. And with the assembly loop and then you can move on to installing your pistons. Uh, we're going to take a we're going to go ahead and put a couple pistons in for you here and then we'll show you exactly how to put your uh, or how to check those to make sure that you have the right clearance in your rod bearings. Okay, now what we're going to do is we are going to go ahead. You can see the connecting rod is in around the crank, and over here we have the other the other half of the cap, the other half of the bearing, and the two nuts. So now we're going to go ahead and put the plastic gauge. right on the crank. He'll lay a little bit longer that way it measures the whole bearing. Again the reason you want to do this is because you want to make sure all your clearances are all your clearances are good because if you don't have good clearances, you'll end up having low oil pressure, which usually ends up leading to a knocking engine. And that's something you don't want. When we talk about rod bearings, it's obviously connecting rods. As you can see, again, that plastic gauge is a, looks like a little piece of spaghetti on there. Now he's going to slide that. The bearings installed along with the cap. And now he's going to tighten that down to the torque specifications for the 350. First he'll hand do them so that they're snug and then he'll do it with the torque wrench as soon as he's done. <clears throat> And you want to do this with each and every connecting rod because you could have one that was bad. It's a lot easier to do it now and that way you're sure you'll have a long engine life. Normally when you put those connecting rods on you would have a uh, you would have a uh, assembly lube that he'd have installed on there before he put that bearing on but because he has a plastic gauge he isn't. After he torques this and we pull it back apart then he will put assembly lube on to reinstall. See he's using a torque wrench it is very important to use a torque wrench on these settings. We go over here. You can see exactly that you're at one and a half.
And that is exactly how you plastic gauge your rods and your mains. Now what he'll do is, is he'll go ahead and he'll put assembly lube on that crank to protect it. And then he'll, re he'll reinstall the cap. The bearing book does allow for the for that for the correct clearance on the Chevy 350 at one and a half, so that is good. One and a half thousandths. Now each time you're done, when he's done with this connecting rod before he moves on to his next one, he'll take this crank again and he'll spin it over just to make sure everything is spins nice and freely because if something binds up or you have something not quite right, it's easier to catch it now than to build the whole engine and find out that something's binding up because you could have fixed it with this. And we've had that problem before where a bearing was off a little bit or a bearing was wrong and this is just why you want to save yourself some headache so a lot of times there will be a keyway on the front you can use a big crescent wrench or we have a special socket that you can use spot socket just fits right on the end of the snout Keyway's gone. Yeah. You can probably spin that one by hand, can't you? Yeah, it was supposed to be Yeah, you gotta have the keyway. He's using a crescent wrench, but you'll see it spins over nice and easy. If something was binding up, you'd be able to catch it right now. So, And that's how you do plastic gauge. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them here, and we'll check it over and give you the answer. Thanks for watching.